Right. Hey, thanks for tuning into my live stream. Um, on Wednesdays, I usually take some time doing work on a project I maintain called PHP Stand Drupal, which integrates PHP Stand with Drupal for analysis. But today I want to do something a little bit different and fun besides my normal open source maintainership duties. So I'm going to see about integrating the test um, testing framework with Drupal. So PHP or Drupal already integrates and uses PHP unit for its test. Um, PEST is a layer on top of PHP unit that gives it, um, if you've worked with, I don't know, Jest or Mocha, I can't, I know I'm gonna give all the JavaScript testing frameworks wrong, um, but if you've worked with JavaScript testing framework, it, frameworks, it brings that style to PHP. Um, and it's really big in the Laravel community. And I feel like if it works with PHP unit, it's gotta work with Drupal. Um, the only thing is that Drupal has some different ways it handles dynamic auto loading and a few other things. So it won't just work out of the box, but I know there is the Laravel plugin because it has to ensure that the Laravel app and container is bootstrapped as well. So it's not the same kind of process, but I figure, hey, should be able to work. Um, so I wanted to give that a shot. So I do have a Repository started at mglomin pest plugin Drupal built off of the plugin template. I do realize that this is built off version 2.x and I just saw some notes that version 2.x will become the default end of this month. So I'll be working with the latest version, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, there's a 1.x and 2.x. 2.x is default over here. So we'll be building against the pest PHP version 2 which from the composer requirements, actually, instead of looking at GitHub, I'll open PHP Storm here. So I do have a environment set up. It's a Drupal site. I have the repo cloned locally, and I have it set up via a path with composer. So that way it is symlinked in. Um, so if we open the composer.json that was scaffolded, it does have PHP 8.1 as a requirement. And actually for this, that is the minimum requirement for Drupal core. So if this is gonna require PHP 8.1, I suppose it should require also Drupal core in here. So that's a go look at the Laravel one real quick. I'm gonna bounce back and forth between reviewing the Laravel plugin and just winging it and seeing what happens. Um, so here, so yep, they have Laravel framework 10 as a dependency. So let's go for it as well. So Drupal slash core Drupal version 10 requires PHP 8.1 and we're off to the races. So before I dive in too much, I actually didn't do any prep for this. The most, most of the prep I did is I created this repo. And then this morning I modified a few minor tidbits in the template and set up this project. I kind of wanted to just do it live and we'll see where it goes. So creating plugins, so setting up the template. Uh, to create your plugin, use template button. We did this, add in uses. Methods can be added for this inside of inside our closures using uses. So we're gonna add a trait and tell Pest to use it. So we have a trait and source. Let's see if that exists here, it does. So let's look at example. We have a T here from PHP Storm. So that means it's a trait. Example, um, this is the plugin that integrates with pest auto load this is registered as the auto loader right that's the root repo sorry for drupal so right here we've got the auto loader so pest plugin name is source oh plugin name i would have to change the plugin name as well um to be pest drupal let's go look at what laravel has for its namespace pest laravel i'm just going to change this to be Drupal. So we'll have pest Drupal be our namespace inside source. Is anything in here? Yep. Yeah. So Drupal. Drupal and Drupal. All right. So that's kind of evened up. Um, so then yeah, there's the auto load because it works with a lot of functions or everything is functions to set classes. So you need an auto loader for that to bring in this file and then all your defined functions. So we have test, and what does test do? So this is where I was trying to read the Laravel integration. 
um, for instance, if we go to the Laravel one, I was trying to figure out how it bootstraps. That was like the main thing. So container, I kept seeing swap calls test swap test instance and all these pass through directly. And I have no idea what it's exactly doing. So I might need to clone this down locally. But now that I'm reading this more, so let's look back at this example. So the example, or rather, let's look back at the test. So we have our pest test here. It uses plugin example. There is the pest. If we look at our plugins. So I do have the pest plugin. It is enabled. And that's what's showing up the the fancy highlights so I can run. That's a JavaScript. That is not at all what I wanted to do. Um, run. Run with coverage. Why is this not showing? So it identifies it as a pest test, but PHP storm is not showing it as a JavaScript or as a PHP file, it's showing it as JavaScript. So let's see if I can configure that real quick. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, so real quick, I'm gonna go to under settings. So again, command comma or control, whatever for Linux and Windows. Um, under PHP, I got test frameworks. Let's go ahead and configure pest local. Path to pest executable. To save some time with clicking through, let's do which, nah, that's not. So, us vendor bin, that's right. That's not gonna do it. Just cheat this way, because I'm sure there is a way I could've got the full path more easily, but. So pest local, this is the runner. It's not going to validate any version configuration file. We're not there yet. So let's see. Okay. So once I configured pest, it doesn't auto discover it in the vendor bin like the PHP unit one does. But again, the pest plugin, I'm fairly certain is maintained by the maintainer of pest and not JetBrains like the PHP unit one. So makes sense. So if I click run, Run example with pest. There's no default interpreter. We want by 8.1. Click OK. Run it. Quit. All right. The pest is not found. Pest Drupal example is not found. I need to do a closer dump. I need to dump the auto loader. So remember, I changed everything in here. But I didn't update my autoloader, so Drupal or not Drupal, uh, Composer's autoloader doesn't know I changed the namespace here. That's not the right command. What well, is? But I ran it again. I want to run the test one more time. All right, so let's see if I can get the test to run now that I've got some of the baselines modified. Um, tester, test, test, pest Drupal example not found. How not? Namespace pest Drupal trait example trait trait trait. Create plugin your GitHub username pest plugin name. Use this call. Let me look at the plugin. The plugins all fine there. Let me just do a um, composer update. So instead of dumping the auto loader, I'm gonna re-require it and see if that fixes it. And if you ever hit this issue and it doesn't make sense, here's how you can go through and debug it more. So you can go into vendor composer, wait for it to load. And you can do auto load, auto load files, or namespaces rather. So we could just pop open namespaces, not it. PSR4, we do pest. So we can see here it says pest plugin is pest PHP. Pest Drupal is the right here. 
source. So it should exist now. It should be fixed up. So if I run it. All right, it passed. Great. So I got my namespaces straightened out. So going off of this, looking at these examples, containers. So this is, these are just functions that call to traits then. Um, oh, yeah. So test, if we go back to this example, because I, I don't even know how pest works. It's a lot of it is magic. So we have a test trait. Trait example defines a method called example. In our test, we're able to call example and it magically maps this function call to this trait. So that means if there's a function called swap, that means it's calling test and swap. So it's mapping to a trait somewhere. So we should be able to go into our the source directory for Laravel plugin and find anything in here that might have swap. So I'm gonna actually just search for function swap container. It only says, sw all right, so maybe I'm not sure how this actually gets registered. So we'll just have to take it from here. We'll just have to wing it. Um, there so traits map into calls there what is the test functions example foo so you can map so plugin uses example so let's look at this auto load so files so here's one oh wait this is for 2.x i just the one thing i'm trying to figure out is how the pest plugin for Laravel bootstraps Laravel um, because in some way or form, it's not just auto loading files. It needs to be able to bootstrap the, um, the container, like the app itself. So this auto load, like we have all the functions split out. That's what that uses here. What about plugin uses? Plugin uses commands, authentication, auto load, console, all of these. I, I looked at it previously before and all these defined pass throughs and no traits. Yeah, that's, those are all functions. The other part is I wonder if pest just has things in it by default that are more hinted for Laravel. So expect extend to be collection. And again, we're back at the swap. So that's not, that's not covering it. Um, oh, you didn't get a response on how the DI works and their Discord. Yeah, that would have been helpful maybe if I joined ahead of time or asked, but hey, we're just gonna figure it out. So let's see. I will figure this out just to get, if I can untie how it works a little bit. So the require, I redid the auto load. Oh, here we go. Source functions and source pest.php are part of the auto load. So again, the Laravel plugin was built alongside pest PHP before the template. So I'm looking at this, that doesn't mean it follows the template verbatim. And some of the other plugins, there's no other plugins that match needing to bootstrap another application. It's like the money library and something else. So if our auto loader has just source auto load, but theirs is functions and pest, let's go back and look at, that's the wrong, shoot. I was looking at the wrong file because that was actually pest itself. Um, so let's go back and look at the composer.json. So auto load pest Laravel is just source, otherwise source auto load. That is exactly what we read. It does have a pest service provider. So I'm going to look there. There's a stubs Laravel. I know that's tied into it. Um, so there's this pest.php resources. <laughs> um, all right. So 
the pest service provider. This ties in, so it registers itself as a service provider with, um, what do you call it, Laravel. We can do this with Drush. So Drush is the command line for Drupal where this integrates with Laravel's built-in console. The only problem is that this installs test and data set. So I guess let's look at the install command because that must do some kind of hard wiring. So commands, install. All right, so install, pre-install test directory, create pest resource with your current PHP unit test suite. All right, this looks like it's good. The stub, stub Laravel, handle test directory. So pest, components, info, test.pest already exists. So let's try to mimic this. So I have this, I have the pest Drupal plugin at the top level, but I'm gonna pretend that it would be inside vendor. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a test directory that would be alongside my Drupal code base. And I'm gonna create a pest.php file, which I'm assuming would be part of the bootstrap process. Let's get some of the boilerplate out of the way. So looking here, if file exists, pest.php pest already exists. Otherwise it copies in from the stubs directory, stubs Laravel, and it's installed. Great. So let's look at that stub. So test case uses test case. Which the good question is, is this going to be binding? Oh, so this extends the default test case. Let's try this out. <clears throat> um, so it uses, Drupal has various test traits. Let's have it use kernel test base. So Drupal has various test suites. We have unit tests for like typical unit tests, like no database, no anything. Then we have kernel tests, which does a light bootstrapping of Drupal and interacts with the database. I'm gonna have it start here. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna have it start with the kernel test base at least. And let's see where in feature, what does in mean? Let's do feature. So this, the closer, the closer you provide to your test functions always bound to a specific PHP unit test case. By default, this is test case, change it to bind in different classes or traits. So let's actually not go there. Let's use unit test case. So Drupal has a test case that extends test case to add some Drupalisms. So why don't we start there? That way it's like a good baseline. Let's say that this is extending the Laravel test case. Unless it's extending PES itself. So expectations, functions. All right. Um, yes. Well, no, that's not exactly true. If you want to test any type manager, you don't technically need the kernel test or the kernel um, if you want, you could unit test entity type manager and fake plugin discovery for entity types, but yes, the straightest way forward with Drupal, because it has all this plugin discovery that requires, um, installed modules. So in Laravel, you declare like your service providers and that's how you plug in functionality in Drupal. It's very stateful. You say this module's installed and that allows that module to provide plugin definitions or other services. So you can, and I have tested it with a unit test, but kernel test does make it a lot easier. Um, all right, so we've got this. Let's right look at, all right, so we have, we have this set up, the install, um, service provider. So we looked at install test. So what does the test command do? Pest test, it runs the test. Wait, or is this for creating? Create a new test file. All right, this is good to know. So what does this do? Browser or feature, so unit. Oh, I'm trying to read this, type. 
Oh my word. If it's a unit, or if it's Dusk, okay. Ah, Dusk is their browser-based testing, and Drupal, we call it functional JavaScript test, and we use Nightwatch.js as well. Um, all right, so unit, unit is unit. Feature would be like a um, functional test, and Dusk makes it a browser test, or functional JavaScript test. So get the test directory, stubs, okay. Where, how does this figure it out? Type. So contents is pest stubs. Where does it get this from? So contents file get info directory of the current directory name pest stubs type. So let's look. I do like the fact that it has all the scaffolding, scaffolding. So I'd like to be able to replicate that, but I don't understand where it's even copying this from. So test directory is from the type you see name first, contents, pest stubs. Oh, it's traversing up a whole level to pest PHP. So if we look at pest, if I get back to cover command, so pest, it's actually going up three levels. So back to the vendor directory, or rather into the pest PHP names or directory to pest stubs. So if we look at stubs, here we go. So again, pest has a Laravel plugin, but it's definitely built for or against Laravel code bases. So here we go. Let's look at unit. These are okay, maybe not. Let's look at feature. All right, this isn't doing anything too spectacular. Um, example test. So maybe this is the better way to look at it. This looks like it's a complete scaffolding. And maybe I should have run that first. I should have run a scaffolding command if there is one. So let's try this out. Let's go back. I jumped ahead. Let's go to PHP vendor bin pest. What happens when I run pest? Okay, that's not found because of the bootloader. Um, so we're already experiencing some issues, which I knew would happen. So let's go back to the installation, make sure I actually have this installed right. Um, requirements step one yep step two init that's what i want all right this is going to complain so let's comment that out actually i'm going to delete this i don't want to delete it yet i want i'm going to rename it Um, would you like to show support by starting the pro oh, I already already have. So we now have a PHP unit that XML. Test past the example test, which is exactly what the install command did basically. Something so let's go ahead and cut this out. So we have this here. One, this is an issue that we're gonna hit, and I even hit in PHP stand Drupal itself. Is Drupal for whatever reason does not specify its um, test namespaces. So it dynamically adds them and populates them in the class loader here. And I don't know why, and it, this is where it puts everything for the modules as well. Um, like, I don't know why we don't have a like core dev or something that registers these. So that's why I was getting that error. 
And the way I fix this with PHP Sand Drupal is we have a boot, like a, we help tie into the auto loading process. So to explain what I'm talking about with PHP Stand inside of extension, it has a bootstrap file and that's going to map into this auto loader I wrote. And this mimics Drupal's very stateful auto loading, um, which this add core test namespaces. So right here, this boots all of that up which to me seems like we would need to just mimic that here. I'd want to find a way to make this be more um, dynamic, but the point of this live stream is just figure it out and then get it working and then we can make it better. So we could say that auto loader equals require, what is it? One second, I do have that. Auto loader. How do I get the auto loader here? Register container. Second, I want to see. Try to. This is so old that I don't remember how I did it. And the root. Ah, include. And then auto loader. So just do include. I'm sure it's probably the same difference using include versus require here, but I'm just going to copy what I know has worked. So it's vendor, autoload.php, and this namespaces, this copy this out. Let's just do so I using option click here. I think it's the same commands in other one and in other OS is on my Mac OS, but that allows you to do multi cursor. So I'm just going to adapt this code really quick. So our core test directory is the current directory and web core. So I said a little bit of hackery going on here. Why is this not? And I've noticed one thing. So test Drupal vendor. Oh, yeah, these paths are going to be completely broken. No, they're not. I'm not inside of. Yeah. Forgot where I was for a second. So yeah, upper directory test core. This Drupal root. Apparently that did not get converted over to. The new way. So let's just do for each namespaces somewhere I do logic to push these into the auto loader. What is it? Prefix paths is array. Auto loader, add PSR4, prefix, and path. All right. So that's hacked in. Oh, no, it's not. I forgot this little line here. And I tried, I updated my browser to increase the font size, but GitHub has all these styling that make it impossible to get this font size increased. Um, all right, so let's try running this test one more time. Non-empty PSR must end with the namespace operator. I do love the output from PEST though. So let's see, paths. I'm gonna run the, let's see. Let's see what happens, I run it. Let's run it with the, with Xdebug and see if it still catches, perfect. 
So what was that error? A non-empty PSR prefix must end with the namespace operator or separator. What did I mess up? So prefix, oh. Let's stop. Did I copy that wrong? Yep, I did. This goes here. So I forgot to put the trailing backslash is what I forgot to do. So if I run this test again, quit during class fetch, whoops, exception. Oh, Jesus Christ. So Drupal supports various versions of PHP unit and it has these um, <clears throat> dynamic traits that it uses. And I'm going to guess that PHP unit compatibility. Where does this one come in? Um, so PHP unit 10 test tools, compatibility, PHP unit test trait cannot be found. I, it is a testament that we are able to bridge these gaps, but man, it is a somewhat pain, maybe because this doesn't actually exist. So why is it being... So class alias, why is this compatibility trait being brought in? Um, in order to manage different compatibility layers, PHP unit, get major version, compatibility trait. Does Drupal not work with PHP unit 10? I bet that's the problem. Upgraded PHP unit nine. Nope, nope. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Darn it. Of course, I. There's issues. So let's see. I need to read these instructions. In order to test PHP v1 and Laravel 10, you must downgrade PHP unit. Requirements PHP unit 9.6. Can I downgrade PHP 10? Address PHP unit 9 for compatibility. Support ends on February 4th. So I'm guessing that we had these compatibility layers to do various backports. And I guess that it just dies on PHP 10. I PHP unit 10. I find this hard to believe, but that's what I'm hitting. Um, as we can see here, there's only a PHP unit 9. There's no PHP unit 10 and no compatibility trait. We're hoping to get compatible thanks to the Symphony Bridge. Oh, hold on. Let me do this. Let me do composer require. This might fix it. Composer require dev Drupal core dev. So that's another thing. Drupal splits out its dev dependencies into a meta package. So the core dev package is what requires um, PHP unit and everything else. PHP unit, be hat, mink browser, all that. So we can see here, core dev requires PHP 9.5. Root composer.json requires 10. So if, or not root. Um, not required. So let's, let's check this. Nothing here, but it's gotta be then inside the plugin. No. Um, so let's do a composer, why not PHP unit, PHP unit 9.5. Past required, oh, 
son of a all right so we need to change this to not use pest 1.x um All right, hopefully the template's still the same in the way that you write plugins. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna recombobulate this a bit to be pest 1.0, one, and let's look at the Laravel plugin. Like what's the last release? tags 1.4 all right so let's look at 1.4 so i kind of started off on the complete wrong foot in the fact that past 2.x is not compatible with drupal 10 or php unit 10 or rather with drupal 10 because of the requiring php unit 10 so let's fix these requirements i'm just going to copy them verbatim Copy this as well, although I need to make sure Pest Plugin is actually available at this constraint. Pest Plugin. Is this like a fake require? Put a mock, faker, here we go. Pest Plugin API. Five tags, 1.1. Let's just do 1.1.0. Composer, fixed it for me. All right, so let's do this. Composer. And I did, I added dash W there so it can update all shared dependencies, which this might not work. No. So composer require. So what I'm going to also do is re require my package so by requiring both it's going to allow computing all the dependencies which should allow bumping down php unit here we go all right so it's downgrading pest and it's installing drupal core dev so i should get unblocked now all right so this solves the issue where PHP unit 10 or <laughs> Drupal was trying to find a PHP unit test, PHP unit, PHP unit 10 test compatibility layer that didn't exist. It uses plugin, call the undefined method, PHP unit framework test case example. Am I going to have to re, I got to read, do this apparently. Um, it's not even recognizing them. Maybe it's got, oh, it's got to finish re-indexing. All right. So source. So I got to look at the 1.x version. Let's look at auto load. So plugins. Actually, I should look back at the template for 1.x. example so plugin templates I should have done it off 1.x I wasn't aware that there's this change so this is the template so good composer.json I need to go back from scratch so PHP I'm still gonna require 8.1 um, pest Test plugin, PSR4, then write namespace, source auto load. Great, great, great. Oh, past dev tools. That's different. Sure, let's do composer update to just fix that dev dependency. And look back at source and the auto loader. 
Let's see. Auto loader the same. Use test case. Yep. So plugin uses example. Yeah. All right. This is all the same here. If we look at plugin. Did this dump down? No, it did not. Composer require. Oh, that's right. It's not going to include that dev dependency because I'm not working with it locally. So that's not going to change anything. Yeah. And then auto load. Auto load is for itself. All right. So I think we're all fine here. There's not too much of a difference. I guess the big difference is 2.x just defaults to PHP unit 10. All right. So let's try running the test. It's failed. Called the undefined example. I don't want, oh shoot. Here, I don't want to run that test. I want to run this test. That's my problem. So PHP vendor bin, test. All right, it passed. Great, we're back to working. Um, it didn't crash. So that means that this auto loaded, and I technically have a working um, Drupal unit test case or available. So let's go find an, I wanna find an existing test and rewrite it for pest and see what happens. So let's go to URL test. Let's see what this has got going on. And ideally this will, Oh, oh boy. Okay, this is using a bunch of mocking. Maybe this is not going to be a good example. I need to see some examples of writing tests. So, underline test case, it has home. Test dependency, data sets, coverage, well. Just see some of the available using test traits. So it creates this git. I still don't understand how under the hood it's connecting everything with Laravel. And that's what I wish I could understand as part of like the setup. That's actually what I want to know is like how to do like a generic setup across the board. Um so let's look back. Theta set, that's not going to be it. Routes, what's this for? Comment pest, who knows what that's being used for. All right, I'm just going to have to look at this. And I guess we'll just, I'm just going to have to try it. So let's see. Pest, or what is it? It even said it? allows URL generation. Right. So let's split the, oh, don't lag on me now, computer. All right. So let's see here. It has users, a certain database has users. Like where a certain database has, like, where does this come from? Set up and tear down. Here we go. So before each test, test, let's, hey, not was really hoping to find in there. So it run return test. So let's just see what happens. Um, let's do expect URL URL from route front to be 
It's like it should be a slash. And if I run this, is this going to run it with test? Okay, it does. It failed to see that object is identical to the two strings. Like here's where there could be usefulness, like this expect, like if we could do, like we could add helpers. So container is not initialized, which we need to mock in a setup. So we could do, let's move this to be tests. Maybe unit test is gonna to be too, too hard and it should be based off a of kernel test. Just to simplify things because of Drupal being Drupal. Um, so let's do kernel test base. Let's just import that. Because then we have a container and if I run this, it's not because there's no setup. Okay. So is there a way to do like a global before each? I don't think so. Like I said, I just, I don't understand how it bootstraps. It's somehow bootstrapping laravel and it's nowhere near descriptive on how that is happening um it so why don't we i go to tab proxy test call test suite test suite get instance it's so all the all the callables logging callables invokes them it returns the test instance, test call, test case factory, returns new. Um, so for kicks, I don't know how this works, so I'm gonna do an X debug and see where we end up. Um, but ideally, what I'd like to do is actually try to make a difference. So let's do a trait public function from route, get route name, or let's do um, URL as string. And we should have a URL object, oh, returns test case. Or URL, URL path, I don't, What's a good way to name this? Um, assert URL path. I don't know what's the pro a good way to name it. So let's just do that. Um, this assert equals. And this is gonna keep complaining. So let's assert this instance of test case. It's gonna use an internal assertion. So that way PHP storm just understands that yes, this trait is inside of a test case. So stop not suggesting things. This assert self assert okay it's not going to even that's not going to do it this assert equals url to string oh how do you actually wait that doesn't even make sense how do you write an assertion that takes the previous value oh boy Example. So it you example foo. So let's do writing creating plugins. Adding expectations. So this would be an extension. Yeah, so before all runs before all tests run, but I'm wondering if I can do that. Or maybe I can call it in that test. So maybe before I do get this far. You're right. Let's let's instead of writing custom anything custom yet to try to improve the experience let's take a step back here so if we extend a kernel test we should have all the helpers we need to do that so let's do before all before each 
and look at the set up and tear down. So before each, do stop equals null. This is like my go-to for when I want to break point somewhere. So let's debug this test. So this is example test. Um, provided test, execution order, test, mock, test case result, groups, default, result, stop here. Underlying test case. I want to who get class this. Let's see what it says the class is. Because it should be a double, which is not test example test. So maybe this only works inside of the class on what it is. This file name, test Drupal example test, before all, for each, provided tests, dependencies, um, shoot, that's not test case, test case. Test is a closure. just have so I'm trying to figure out how we can mimic if we're saying that we have this uses that says uses kernel test base does that mean we can only use its public methods yeah the problem is I don't know what we can do inside of Reusable and shared. Okay, at some point you may need or want some kind of shared testing scenario. Doing this, use the uses. All right, so let's move because we need to replicate all of this magic inside of setup for a kernel test. So we have uses in feature. So let's do another uses. So uses. Before each, all right, there we go. All right, so we have this here. Oh, it doesn't have any arguments to it. Let's move this out. Because we're replicating I want to know, I wish I knew how it blended in this uses. So I think I'm going to have to just step into this. Let's do it. I'm going to do a debug. So uses right here, string classes and traits. Test example. Okay, so we got Drupal kernel test base. This uses call with the file name, constructs the file name, the targets. In targets, so feature, sure. Oh, features actually, how does it know it's a feature or not? Maybe that's why it's not working. So I'm saying in feature, that's the target. Oh, son of a gun. All right. Targets. If the separator in path features path. Return zero. Start care. Array reduce. This targets. So that's probably why it's not working. 
because I didn't have my test set up to correct it. So let's look at writing tests. Okay, writing tests. It's got to tell you probably a place to put it. Unit feature. Son of a... There we go. Um, so really, in here, we're not going to give it any target because we want it to be all things. So let's, I'm going to make a note for myself. Um, to do... Or, no, here we go. Let's do... Let it, let's keep that. And feature, let's just call it kernel. Because if I'm reading this right, it filters it down. So we could have a unit test base, unit test case. And this could say unit test. Um, so let's go ahead. I need to close this. Let's have a new directory called kernel. And I'm going to move the example test into there. So the in is like doing, so in is like a version of using test suites by directory. So write a test in the unit or file directory, make sure the end name's in the, dot, in the test, and it's gonna map to certain uses. So if I were to look back at Laravel, not even in here, but in the stubs. So if it's a unit test, it uses the PHP unit test case, but if it's a feature, which is like their version of Drupal's kernel test, it uses the test case from Laravel, I assume. So, okay, let's try this now. Let's go into this test and I'm gonna debug it. And our debugger should be caught here. So file name, test plugin, uses call, let's skip over this one. So if we step in, let's step over one more time, file name. Oh, what? Unexpected identifier D on an input line of four. That's not what I was looking for. What kind of error is that? So let's comment this out. I didn't have this before each breakpoint. So let's do debugs. What is happening now? So this error, by the way, it looks like it's there's a typo in the um code that PHP unit is generating when it runs in an isolated process. So what? All right, let's get back to something that works. So uses kernel test base. Nope. Let's comment this line out. Containers not initialized. Yep. Figured that in kernel. Let's move this before each to end here. So all of this is, so we're gonna run all of this inside of kernel tests. Let's debug. Is it this code? Or is it something about this test, when this gets brought in, oh man. All right, um, I gotta put a breakpoint here. That's not even gonna do it. Let's put a breakpoint in here. All right, this allows test, the closure, let's step through. 
file name. This is a test file, test call, test suite, get instance. We're going to go down the rabbit hole and find out why this broke. Um, so get instance, root path is null, if is string, self instance. Yep, we have an instance here before each repository, before all, after, after all test, test repository uses. kernel so here's one problem I guess let's go to or no not that's not a problem so this is just registering so this uses registers this example test case that's all that's doing all right so where are we again so we've got the instance and we have everything registered kernel test base so it returns the instance. And now we're creating a test called test case factory. Okay, so we got a test case factory. Returns the test destruct. Okay, so this is kind of neat. So the, the test call, when the destruct is called, that's when like um, PHP shutting down. It's test suite test set this test case factory, test case factory name only. Test is the closure class. Oh, so it's using test case, not, not the base class I wanted. Um, or hold on. This isn't what I was expecting when reading this, um, underlying test case uses the uses function binds a class trait or closure to your test files this is how you'd bind a trait uses test case and feature using the given test case and unit for each regression so Traits, let's look at traits, testable, executable, proxies, chains. Why is it not picking up my uses? Like I told it to use so here's the uses. So that, to me, this isn't making any sense right now. So let's just go through. That's the test. Test case factory is missing those sets. Um, array key exists. If the test doesn't receive arguments, the arguments are an empty array. Because it's not a data set, this state. So this state, it allows URL generation. All right, so that's the test. So if that's being destructed. So also when you when a PHP script shuts down, um, the root class will have its destruct method called before any of its own properties. So I'm assuming happening is happening now is we did test that creates a test call. That destruct gets called before the test suite gets its destruct call. So we should probably end up in here or here. When I say here, like this test suite object with its own destruct um, file loader, we are in PHP unit util. What is it trying to? Okay, went into here. Now what I was expecting, file name, new variables. So this checks if the global state changed included file path return add test file so now we're in php unit is adding the test file new classes found classes short name class reflection class pending object test call if it's not else 
try class name test case factory we have the class it's not abstract it has method else implements test where are we going so number of tests is equal to negative one so part of this is we're now getting some of the internals um test suite example test found classes okay pass php add test two so it adds the test to the test suite this test suite test runner step through this create runner that did not step in like i was hoping it would um the runner is here code filter timer so suite and in this case the test suite contains our one test with this name it has its own it the groups and it has our test in here so past wraps closures as in like almost anonymous or stubbed PHP unit test on demand and falls back to the run, the default PHP unit runner. So result this runner run, let's step in. I need to figure out why it's crashing. Um, this handle configuration warnings. Do we have any warnings? No columns arguments bootstrap what is bootstrap is vendor auto load sure backup globals cache results yeah. execution order is not default cache cache load sorter blah 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 Repeat result. All right. Create test result. Listener for this extension. Add. You know, I kind of forgot what the initial error was even. Oh yeah, it says error output like D on line 34 of the generated test. Um, printer, oh my goodness this right arguments at listener oh. coverage. all right get to the execution warning let's just see if i can get past all this run result let's just skip to the cursor line enforce the time limit so process filters all right sweet run there we go so the run this is what should do it count class name so there's our class name test kernel hook methods there are oh before class set up before class okay those all exist For each this as test, result should stop. Test run. I'm going to put a breakpoint here as my breadcrumb. So now we're back to here. Result start test suite. What happens inside of here? Just some listeners. So test for class. Result test run. What is the test? So now it's going to run itself. Now it's actually going to run our test. So it is, it is, <clears throat> if I look at this, the test is merged because now we can see kernel test base, the deprecation warnings, config schema, checker exclusions. So it is merged up. 
let's step into the running. Um, if this run in separate process. Okay. So this is, so what happens when, I don't know if anybody's ever dug into this, but Drupal runs all of its tests in isolated process. And what happens is a on the fly file is generated and that's passed in and executed by PHP. And for whatever reason that is being generated like garbage when using the kernel test space. And I'm assuming it's something with the magicalness of past, past PHP. So this is the root of where I was trying to get, and I couldn't remember where it was. Um, I've had to debug this before because if you use testing in isolation with the process, there's a serialization issue. Um, things kind of explode as well. So if you do a lot of PHP unit inside test case, this line right around here is really valuable. So if you're testing in isolation, so running the entire class is false. Try class, get the reflection, if run entire class. So here's the template. Um, here, let's actually open it. So this is the file that's going to be replaced and passed in and executed. It says line 34, require once, son of a what? Oh. How... How has nobody else hit this issue before? If not class exists, class name require file name. Let's step through. Um, and I don't know if anybody's there. I, I've noticed. Wait, this is a P. Where is it getting like a D from for the error? All right. I got to I gotta keep stepping through because um, it's just not making any sense. It's basically trying to require a file or something. I don't know. Let's let's see. Um, where does it do the replacements? Yada yada yada. Data. Okay. Where does it do the replacements in the template? Template set there. Run test job. Let's just use the jump to cursor. So. Template, set variables. Let's find the template. Oh. That's why. How has nobody hit this before? Um, I'm so confused. So when looking at that original template file, it says if the class doesn't exist, class name, um, require once file name. And as we can see here, the file name is test factories evaled code. So it's dropping in an apostrophe, which is closing out the string and causing an error. So if we go template render, I'm just going to pop out and pop back in to run test job. Here's the job string. Include paths require once factories evaled code. So here we go. I'm going to, Copy the value. We're going to make it a PHP string. So we can see here, this is why we have the error. Because it says evaled code. Unfortunately, I have no idea why we're getting here. Um, goodness. All right, let's try and uh, let's try to make this work. So the issue is specifying this class. When I don't, there's the error. The problem it um test case factory. Let's try to look at this line two two three eval code. Let's 
the line two, two, three. Try eval. Oh, make class from file name. Let's debug this. So I'm going to run the debugger. Yep, I'm going to skip that. So fully qualified name. Class FQN, P test, try eval. Following what? What I'm trying to understand is why Oh, no, I know why. Okay. Um I know why. So this is not a pest PHP problem. This is a Drupal runs things in isolation problem. Um So, okay, here's, here's the issue. Um, I need to make sure I summarize it best. Why did I close test case factory? Two, two, three. So, um, this make class from file name. Test PHP fails when PHP unit is running in isolated in isolate in test isolation was working on trying to trying to test Drupal plus with test test PHP using the following line to I'm going to use here let me increase the font size so it's easy to read um, using the file line to use an existing base test from from Drupal and I'll try to summarize this as I go because in my head it makes sense but I'm trying to make sure I um, have it right so let's see I want to make this be the fully qualified name Um, when I executed the test, I got an error about the evaluated code, code from PHP units. I did some debugging and found PHP unit was running in isolation running the test in isolation and provided the following in following in its template template let's go to um, php unit test tpl.php oh. full source here so where's the error okay so when it's an isolation if it can't find the test it tries to load the test and the test test case factory make class from file name runs an eval that creates the class at runtime which means it's loaded by php in that current instance technically the class does not exist when the test is executed because it um 
how's the right way to word this? The class exists is failing because the test is loaded in a sub process. Then it uses eval to create the class at runtime in memory. So it exists in the original process. So that's the thing. When you run pest, it takes all of your magic in your closure and it creates this class and it does it in memory. And then later PHP unit just runs it. It's fine because PHP knows it exists because it created the class. But when it's in a sub process in isolation, it doesn't exist. So Ghost tries to reload the file basically and make itself aware. But the thing is it's at runtime in a magical file that doesn't actually exist. Hence, you cannot use pest PHP and with PHP unit in isolation. I don't think this is fixable. I'm not sure of a path forward beyond just a foot a documentation piece that says pest PHP cannot execute if php unit is running tests in separate processes and as a courtesy i'm going to go ahead and put this as the tlr no grammarly i'm not really feeling it today all right Submit the new issue. Um, so let's 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 prove this fact by going to kernel test base. Man, Drupal, you just got to do so many goofy things. Um, so if I set this to false, and if I run the test now, all right. So now it doesn't crash. So, well, then, um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe, I guess, may, I, I guess the answer is like, well, I guess you can't use pest with um drupal unless we recreated a lot of the magic that's in here which i don't necessarily think would be a bad idea because drupal had its own what was it php simple test so there was simple test for php which was released and drupal i don't think Drupal actually used this library. It like forked it. I don't know the history. I got into Drupal around the, like 2013, 11, 12, something like that. Like near the end of Drupal's age and simple tests have been around for a while. And then during the Drupal 8 life cycle, so eight, seven years ago, eight years ago, we adopted PHP unit, but it was a very fast ad ad adoption. So I wonder if there's just some leftover isms that have been ported over. So now we're, we're not very holistically PHP unit. It's our test runner, but we're not doing the best things possible. So it might not be a bad idea to um, recreate certain things, but I think the pest plugin Drupal would have to reinvent how tests are done with Drupal, which again, I guess isn't horrible, but is just hard it makes extra work um shoot so i'm trying to think of the way forward even for this um example the plugin because with this you need to know where Drupal's located 
So, all right, that aside, let's go. We're going to keep that. I'm going to find a way that we can at least get this code into the main package. And then it's something I can just keep working on and hacking on. Because even though I might have, I might not be able to think of it right now, ideas might come to me or somebody else might have ideas that work. So what can happen is I can move this, this chunk into the auto loader and again, mimic what I'm doing with PHP sand Drupal. Cause I know I was just asking like, Oh, how could I handle auto loading of Drupalisms with, um, past? Well, there's an auto load that gets called. So one thing that PHP sand Drupal uses is the Drupal finder library. So we're going to go ahead and require that. So pass plugin Drupal require composer require Drupal finder, which I guess I should rename this branch to be 1.x instead of 2.x. Oh no, I've just set up a whole thing. Oh well. It's always hard doing like integrate like package development because you have like you need to do it alongside things. Um, but I'll just it'll make I'll make it work for right now. So now that we've got the Drupal Finder package, let's go copy over how. This works. Oh, thanks. So there is a parallel. Oh. Oh, thank you. Wait, parallel. All right. By default, pest executes or test sequentially. Parallel. All right. How does this make it work then? Thank you for finding that. Let's detour back. And to make sure I'm doing the right thing, let's look at the 1.x branch. All right, so what magic trickery are you doing here? Oh, there's a parallel plugins using Paratest. So I don't think Offhand, what Paratest does is what Drupal has implemented. Um, Drupal has a script for executing a bunch of basically executing like up to 50 PHP unit tests in parallel um, using processes. And I think that's the same thing Paratest does. So it's not the same as PHP unit in test isolation. So with PHP unit test isolation, it isolates each individual test method run, not necessarily each class. And I think Paratest allows you to run multiple tests or specific test methods in parallel processes using like filter under the hood. But let's just, let's review it and see. But I think it's, it's two different items. Um, the running PHP unit in isolated processes happens when you have global state pollution, like static methods, and you want to ensure that they're reset between test runs, not so much about parallel parallelization for speed. Um, but let's, let's review this because this is a good thing to find. Command. Yep, yep. Pair test command. Let's look at command. Why do I not see Paratest? Paratest console, Paratest command, application factory, set root path, test suite. All right, let's just open all these up. Environment, process environment handler, let's see that. Because so far this code's doing nothing to affect how past PHP generates that 
test class itself. Force colors. Executable class test. Runner. All right, so maybe there could be something in there. Argument handler does not look very interesting. Art concerns. Interpret results, not so much. Colors Laravel, parallel. That's arguments, so maybe not. Yeah. All right, let's look at executable, executable pest test, pest runner worker, and runner. Okay. Um, construct, this could test count. That's not okay. Construct runner worker, which runner worker is coming from pair test. Stop pair test runner, handle output, handles the output, edit args. Oh, excuse me, that gets the binary. Runner. Test test. This option file. So it gets occurrences, so array map, each file. So yeah. What this does is it executes each file individually, not each. So it still would happen. Essentially, you could use Paratest with PHP unit in isolation because it would run each test in its own instance. This, this, yeah. So PHP unit isolation testing isn't about running multiple tests at once. It's about preventing static variables from making a mess because you modify global state. Um, this is about running them parallel. And like when looking at this, yeah, it just helps tell pair test how to run all the different pest tests because I'm assuming like the neat part is if you had in here like multiple it like it looks like it might actually split that to be multiple parallels which is nice but it's not going to fix this one problem um so at least i'm gonna i'm just gonna i usually do these streams for about two hours i've got 25 ish minutes left so i'm gonna tie off by trying to get this auto load to handle this at least and um Pane. so it has an annotation or it has it as a built-in flag which by default drupal sets it's like when i when i change this from false to true um it turned on oh hey my keyboard's almost dead So when I turn, like when this is set to true, which Drupal forces by default, we go kaboom. When I set false, we get the normal error that says there's no database connection, which is great because that's the next part we would like to do. Um, well, this opened in the wrong. Yeah, so this documentation talks about it um, in a separate PHP process. So it preserves the global state from beforehand. And actually, I'm kind of surprised this documentation is not more. Well, maybe it's about the annotation. Let's get to um, what is it? Separate process. Let's see if we get a better docs. Run a separate process. Isolation, here we go. Oh, so this is like a flag to run it in isolation instead of each. So yeah, it's not about parallelizing. It's with pair test, it's still going to run PHP unit without isolation because pair test is a layer, is a Think of pair test as a an executable for PHP unit in parallel, not actually replacing PHP units executor. From my understanding of it. 
So this bug, I like this wouldn't help because see we said executable pest test does an array. Do run output it creates the workers and these workers are going to process and in the end they're just going to run the test. I mean I guess this says test running. So yeah, so here few computed tests running right filter this running pest runner worker runner worker it's yeah it's not it's not causing ph pair test doesn't cause php unit to dump the test to a template file and that's the bug so let's get this then it requires Finding the Drupal root, which also doesn't always exist, so or isn't a known constant because yay. That's where I there's something missing with the Laravel stuff because Laravel you also have to configure certain parts, and I just want to know how it gets all that. Bootstrap vendor autoload. It's not in that example. Um, it's going to put a. Let's do. Move this out of here. And let's say um, finder finder equals new Drupal finder. This is going to be the wrong path because it's not based on the vendor directory. Um, and I don't think this goes up directories either. Use link. Wow. Well, shift path up, moves up a directory. So yeah, why not? Um, Yep, I was really hoping that this would get further, but I kind of expected this to go a little sideways. Oh well. Here we can say root. Where do I go from here? That. Not found in bool. Let's do. Wait a second. All right, so there we go. Let's look, let's go back to this past. Now, if I run it, yeah, okay. On bool, that means they couldn't figure out where Drupal was. So maybe I won't commit that. Or maybe what I'll do is I'm going to just, I'm going to leave notes because that's the big thing. I would like to come back to this. Um, if you do get Drupal finder, get Drupal finder configured to um, find Drupal and register. But even if, the, if this doesn't work, actually, never mind. Um, let's do this. I'm going to do a, I'm going to update the readme. It'll load it. Um, do 
note. Leveraging, leveraging existing PHP unit, unit test case base classes beyond unit test case is not possible due to Drupal defaulting, defaulting to test isolation. So all's not lost, actually. Why don't we? There it is. All right. Thank you, um, Dan Sis Analysis, for commenting there. I guess if I would have looked at the issue queue, I would have found it. I do not. Not right now, have capacity to add support. Thank you for that. And that is one reason I like doing these things on live streams because I could be doing it and going down a rabbit hole, but luckily others help out. I very much appreciate that. For context, C and So what it can do is, all right, where does this live? Here, auto load, plug in, pass as output. It'd be nice to have this automatically registered. Like, I guess I wanna see if other plugins do that. Um, plugins. Mock money. Let's see what money does. Global assertions. So past money. Laravel doesn't set anything up. Uh, live wire. It'd be nice to have this like as a default. So we say that if it's in unit, I'm going to keep that one. Like so we can map or at least have this configured yes all's not lost um so we could do a unit test file unit unit example test.php it works um, who equals new formatable markup, right? Like we could do this at least. Expects who this is streamable. Why is it not giving me the hint for expect string foo to be um, man, this is taking forever to index because I added that vendor directory. I'm going to delete that because it double added Drupal. Oh boy. Um, so let's just see plug in money. So we look at the auto load. Oh, this adds a global. Extend to be money to be money. This so there could be ways it's used. I, I think there could be usefulness to it, um, and maybe it could help solve some unique testing with Drupal problems. Now my PHP storm froze. Slide I just a bit ambitious in two hours to get to, to work. No, unfreeze. Um, oh, come on now. All right. Well, when this unfreezes, 
I'm going to commit this up. Um, so again, if anybody's curious to follow along, here's the link of where I'll be working on it. I'm probably going to mess with it here and there as I would like to get this to work. Um, I don't, I would like to get it working with a bootstrap database at least because just that that's going to get the most benefit for anybody that's testing their Drupal code. Um, it's just going to require a bit of magic and I'll probably switch. Maybe what I'll do is I'll switch on and off working on this pest plugin and PHP stand Drupal. Um, because I'm, I would like it to maybe, it'd be nice if using PEST made people find writing tests more enjoyable. And I fully believe in test-driven development and that it builds a better architecture. Like, I'm not a big fan of PHP spec. I don't think behavior-driven develop or BDD, not BDD, but like behavioral tests like BHAT and PHP spec, I don't like that flow um, as much. So maybe Livewire would be a way to like get people to test things and at least get some test coverage. So there you go. Yeah, my peach. Oh, no, it unfroze. All right. Let's run this and see if it goes. Oh. So there's an error. Test. Oh, that's right. Because I went ahead and deleted all of that code. So let me undo that. Um, test. Paste that here. Too few and oh, too few arguments. So let's just go all out. So we got string, and it should do a replacement of bar to or foo to bar. So we have it working and in here, it'd be neat to extend some of the helpers for test, like adding custom expects for working with formatable markup or translatable markup, uh, mocking the container. So there is a usefulness for it and we'll see where we can go um, from there. So let's see, before I do run off, let's get this commit up. Get status, get commit AV. Just gonna do that. Um, fix up namespace. Add note to README. What I should do is get branch or get new branch one dot x. Get push origin one dot x because I don't have two dot x support. So I'm gonna at least triage that and make one dot x be the default branch. Where do we go? Where do we go? One dot X. Yes, I understand the update the default branch. So hopefully that was interesting and maybe you learned a little bit about pest PHP or how it works on the insides. I know this was a good deep dive for me to figure that out. Um, now I understand how it takes this. Where'd it go? Not there. Um, so now I at least understand how it takes this called it creates a new object and the object is destructed. It passes it to PHP unit and then executes it. So it's a little bit more understanding and I'll probably keep working on this. If you're interested in when I work on it, follow me on Twitch. I go live every Wednesday at 2 PM central. I either work, uh, I usually work on my PHP extension or fun things like this. This will probably be my new. I really would like to get this working and prove it out. So I'll be working on it more. Um, or you can find me on Twitter at NMD Matt or GitHub, etc. as M. Glauman. So thanks for tuning in and have a good one. Bye.